You know what's bewildering and absolutely bizarre? Is the fact that in 2024 we even talk about Assassin's Creed. Like, for the last five years, I've heard from many places of the internet about obscure hentai games because those are more famous and probably better made and more enjoyable as gameplay, porn aside, than Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed. It, it, it's an awful franchise. Everything about it is god-awful. Incredibly simple gameplay that even a monkey can participate in it by just hovering its left testicles over the keyboard and you get to finish the game. Perfect for game journalists, by the way. Incredibly grindy, incredibly generic, incredibly sanitized. I mean, this used to be a franchise about assassinations. It's in the name. You, you had to figure out the target that you want to take down. You had to formulate a plan. You had to figure out how to hide from the guards. And you had to try and do it stealthily. And you were rewarded for doing that. And that was just a hack and slash third person person like RPG type of mesh where, where you're getting XP and, and you see what the fuck is it? It, do it doesn't have any soul anymore, right? So a lot of people just moved away from the franchise and anyone just stopped caring. It, it's kind of like, oh, well, it's that time of the year when Assassin's Creed comes out. Like if I have absolutely nothing better to do and there are absolutely no other games coming out, maybe I'll buy it. So Ubisoft does what they do best. They push some controversy into it, right? They, they're like, oh, we're going to get our diversity, inclusivity, and equity consultants, and they're going to help us out. Now, the way they help us out is the way that current AAA does marketing, right? They, they push for a controversy, and they want the game to sell because of the controversy. They don't want the game to sell because it's got amazing story, or that it's got amazing gameplay, or it's got some brand new features, or the graphics are mind-blowing. No, 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 it's just the controversy. That's how they're selling it nowadays. So, so what does it mean? It's like, okay, well, we're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars over the last five years in order to indoctrinate the customer that representation is important, that authenticity is important, that cultural appropriation is beyond the pale, shit that no one gave a fuck, before 2016, like, I guarantee to you, if they would have made Yasuke before 2016, no one would have cared. If Japan would have made an anime with a black samurai, no one would have cared. But th these are the people that, again, they spend hundreds of millions of dollars in order to educate the gamer about how important authenticity is. And if you have a black guy, you can't have a black voice actor. And, and if you have a fucking kimono, it can't be worn by a white person. Congratulations, your indoctrination was successful. You know, everyone wants to see themselves in the video game nowadays. Oh, I'm a straight white man. I don't see myself. I don't buy game. Go to your HR lady and bitch at her because she's the one that did this to me. But anyway, all jokes aside though, now they are finally doing Assassin's Creed that takes place into ancient Japan, and they're casting a black guy as the main character. So, so half of the internet is like, but was he real though? Like, did he exist? Was he a retainer? No, he was a samurai. <gasps> they don't know history. <gasps> they don't know history. And the other side is like, oh my God, they don't like it because it's a black guy. Oh, that is so disrespectful. <gasps> so disrespectful. Racism. <sighs> Racism. Who gives a fuck? Like, ironically, who gives a fuck? It's like, what, what Ubisoft casts in their video games? It's fucking Ubisoft. They are willing to call the cops on gamers. The, this is an unhinged company. Do you think they have any connection to reality? No, they don't. They, they are so clueless about what the gamer wants that, that they are incapable of providing a product for the gamer. They, they know what their consultants want. They know what their shareholders want. They don't know what you want. They don't even speak with you. They, they hire the worst imaginable community managers that look at you with disgust and disdain and they put those to loom over you. That's how much they care about you as a customer. Okay, so don't look at Ubisoft and tell me, oh, they're disconnected from the... They're fucking Ubisoft. The only company in the world that's more disconnected from, with the gamers than Ubisoft is probably Activision Blizzard and it's very close. Like one month, maybe Activision takes over. The other month, Ubisoft is winning. They haven't made a good game in the last fucking 10 years. Why are people Pikachu facing at this? You know, like you talking about this shit is actually what they want. Like they want this game to be trending so that when people go on Twitter, they see it in the trending list and it's free advertisement for them.
And this is pretty much what Asmongold is talking about. First of all, people are now talking about Assassin's Creed over this shit. And the second thing is that um, the price for the game is absolutely ridiculous. Again, they want content that's being locked unless you pay $130. That, that's fucking ridiculous. And, and you know what the funny thing is? You know what the hilarious thing is? There are people that I know who would pay $130 if the game was good. Like, if Mass Effect, the original, came out today and it had the exact same amount of success as it did back then, or if a Blizzard game of that quality, like World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3, StarCraft 2, would come out today, there are people more than willing of spending $120. Obviously not everyone, because not everyone has that amount of money, but I know people that told me they would unironically be willing to pay $120 or even $130 if the game had the same quality as the games that they grew up with. And that is the reality. None of these games are good. Like, all of these games, even, even if you were to play them, they're mediocre at best. All controversy aside, let's get real for a second. This is a, not a Mass Effect level type of game. Th this is not a Elden Ring level type of game. I would say that it's not even within the same area as the first Tomb Raider remake that came out. So why are they asking $130 for? Who, who needs to get rewarded for this shit? Is the story that amazing? Well, apparently before even the story is out, even before it's out, people are pissed off. So clearly no, like the, the story writer did not understand the market. Objectively so, like the game isn't even out and the downvotes are insane. Uh, is the storyteller getting the bigger pie of the cash? I don't even see tits in this game. What, what is the booba? I mean, most of the people that play Assassin's Creed are men. Where's the fan service? Oh, there isn't. Okay, so you want me to pay $130? I like sex and violence. I guess the game has violence. You removed one of the things I'm interested in. But you want me to pay you more? You want me to pay you more? No! Satisfy me! Give me satisfaction! This is a product! It's entertainment! You're not entertaining me for $130! So, wh why why should we pay $130? Now, a lot of people point out, and Asmogold included, um, this is to try to convince people to sign up for the... Uh, I think it's like $19 Ubisoft monthly, and you sign for that, and they hope that you forget about it, and then it's like a recurring subscriptions so they're trying to spook you with these huge prices i don't fucking know this is a progressive company right left leaning cares about minorities uh, oppressed people oppressed people don't fucking have money why are you milking them like that ubisoft i i, lo I love the mentality of these triple a companies and all the stooges that defend them right very left leaning on pol on political issues yes like far left on social issues economic right-wing as fuck. Like, if they could, they would go and they would exploit kids in Africa and put them in the mines. If they had the ability to, they would do that, while at the same time, virtue signaling to you about BLM and all the other American stuff. And this is the reality. These are the companies that I need to look up to and say they're good, because otherwise you get death threats. Yeah, unironically, uh, Asmongold, you go on Twitter, so many death threats from left-leaning individuals, the, the purest of the pure of society, right? God's fucking chosen that they're, they're the most uh, educated, uh, the most kind and compassionate individuals out there, and yet they don't find enough compassion not to give Asmogol the death threat. And, and just so you know, I don't give a shit about mean words on the internet. You know, I grew up with Skullfuck 47 and N Star Star Killer 54, and they have a very huge potty mouth and slurs all over. And I used to call them keyboard warriors. Because they don't do shit. You know, like online, they, they go to the keyboard and they show that they're tough asses. But they would never say the same vitriol that they do online into someone's face. They don't, they don't operate like that. So, according to my principles, I don't give a fuck. You know, like I, I get harsh words, criticism, and all the nastiness on the internet. It comes part and parcel with being a streamer. But we don't live by more my morality. It's not my morality that I live by. No, we live in the morality of trust and safety. And trust and safety says that you should never, under any circumstance, say nasty things to people online. And, and this is the morality created by the same individuals that are saying the nasty stuff. 
How does that work? Why, why is that fair? What is the equity? How is it equitable? But anyway, right, let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.